Good morning, my friends. It's Monday, August 14th, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. This is our last day visiting the painting by Henry Torbe Hendrik Torbegin, The Crucifixion with Saints Mary and John. I noticed today that the living are in color, whereas Christ, who has died, is ghastly white. And the sky itself are the same colors as Christ, just light and darkness, but no color. Stars shine behind him. What is death and life and how one passes from one state to another is a mystery to all humanity, even today. Only God knows how we live in this life and in the resurrection to come. Our scripture is full of darkness today. David has committed adultery with Bathsheba, their child has died. Time passes and the David's children grow. And we see what scholars call the succession narrative beginning. Who will succeed David on his throne? But what happens is that the children of David begin to war with one another as David's sin permeates through his progeny. Abnon, who is a son of David, begins to lust after Tamar, who is his half-sister, born of another mother but the same father. He wants her so badly and he won't wait. So upon the advice of his cousin, he pretends he's sick and asks for her to come and wait on him. She comes into his chamber to, to put together some dough that he asked for heart-shaped little cakes. He asks all the servants to leave and then he asks her to come to his bed and then he takes her and grabs her and she begs him, please don't do this. If you ask our father, he'll give me to you in marriage, but Amnon won't have it. He lies with her. And then after he's done, he hates her and casts her out. And she says, this is worse than the first thing. She tears her robe and puts ashes on her head and screams and walks through the hall. Her full, full brother, Absalom, sees what has been done with her and he is incensed. And so in the next passage, Absalom comes up with a plan where he goes away with his brother Amnon and some servants, gets his brother drunk, and has his servants kill his brother. Horror, rape, murder, all of this is associated back with David and his first sin, as if by doing badly himself, he affected not only himself, but his children and his children end up warring with one another. How complex it is, this, this theory of generational sin, generational atonement. But it is real. The actions of our parents affect the children and the children's children. So know your ancestry, but then forgive it and do the best you can to love your children. For your love also will expand just like our sin can expand down the generations, our goodness and our care can as well. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We ask you to help us be wise in our actions, in our deeds, in what we say. Help us always to act out of love and care that we may affect not only ourselves, but the generations to come. We ask you to bless the sick today, Lord Christ, to bless those who mourn, to bless those who are dying, those who are hungry, those who struggle with addiction or mental illness of any kind, those in pain, those who are lonely. We ask you to give us wisdom as a human race and hope that we might learn to care for this planet and for one another. Bring us peace. Help us to learn from our mistakes, that we may create 
new generations of kindness and justice, goodwill. For we know that all we do affects not only us, but those around us and those to come. This we pray in the name of Jesus, your Son, who loved us so much that it carried on for thousands of years, permeating all generations. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.